In the cold silence beyond the edge of our solar system, something stirred. Voyager 2, launched in 1977, was never meant to speak again, but in September 2025, it did, transmitting signals that matched the heartbeat of an object called 3i slash ATLAS. What began as a scientific hail turned into a two-way exchange, executable code, a triangular schematic, a synthetic voice, then silence. Was this a warning, a response, or the beginning of something much bigger? NASA won't say, but the message was clear. We are no longer alone, and the void has started to speak back. Voyager 2's last frontier mission revived. In August 2025, as the interstellar object 3i A TLAS streaked toward the inner solar system, NASA made a desperate move, tucked away in deep space, over 12.3 billion miles from Earth, Voyager 2 still whispered faint signals. Launched in 1977, it had long outlived its mission. Its power source, the RTG, was barely producing 48 watts. Most systems had been shut down, and its last trajectory adjustment was over three decades ago. But it was still out there, beyond the heliopause, facing the stars. To NASA, that made Voyager 2 uniquely important. All modern observatories, Hubble, JWST, and Earth-based arrays were bound inside the sun's gravitational influence. But Voyager had escaped. If 3i A TLAS passed close enough, Voyager might detect emissions the others couldn't. On August 25th, a coded sequence was transmitted through the Deep Space Network, DSN, instructing Voyager to rotate and align with Atlas's projected approach corridor. Internally, it was labeled Intercept Alignment Protocol 01. The signal took more than 17 hours to reach the probe. Then came five days of silence. Engineers feared the worst, but on September 2nd, Voyager responded. Its signal was steady, stronger than expected, and showed signs of alignment completion. The probe had accepted the command. Against every expectation, Voyager had come back online, not just to listen, but to engage. No one at NASA said it aloud, but the shift was obvious. Voyager, our oldest machine, was no longer just drifting. It was now pointing towards something we didn't understand. Voyager's signal came back to life, but embedded within the noise was a pattern, repeating, rhythmic, and eerily familiar. What NASA found next didn't come from Earth. It came from somewhere else. The encrypted command and the awakening. When Voyager 2's carrier signal returned on September 2nd, 2025, engineers at the Deep Space Network, DSN, immediately noticed something wrong. Beneath the usual frequency was a low modulation, steady, rhythmic, not noise. When filtered, the signal revealed a structured pulse repeating every four hours, identical to the thermal cycling pattern detected by JWST in 3i slash ATLAS just nine days earlier. This wasn't a coincidence. Voyager was now echoing the rhythm of something alien. The timing was uncanny. The modulation appeared just after the intercept alignment command, raising speculation that Voyager hadn't just received instructions, but something else had too. When spectral data from Madrid, Goldstone, and Canberra were compared, the signal structure was confirmed across all three. This wasn't interference. The modulation was encoded, uniform, and repeated over seven cycles before engineers isolated it completely. It became clearer that this wasn't Voyager broadcasting its own telemetry. Parts of the signal matched emissions already recorded from ATLAS. Others didn't match anything at all. And then something even stranger occurred. Voyager began slightly adjusting its frequency to compensate for known solar wind interference. But its last software update was in 1989 and it had never been programmed with autonomous error correction. By September 4th, internal NASA logs labeled the event as a co-opted transmission pattern. Privately, many now believed 3i slash ATLAS had accessed Voyager, hijacked it, not through brute force, but through compatibility, as if the object knew how to speak through our systems. Voyager was still speaking, but maybe it wasn't our voice anymore. The signal was one thing. What happened next was worse. Voyager 2 began to move, not much, not fast, but unmistakably. Its trajectory was shifting, 
and it was shifting toward a TLAS, the drifting course. Between September 5th and 10th, Voyager's position drifted by fractions of a degree, enough to trigger alerts at JPL. Its path, stable for 20 plus years, had begun to bend. The deviation wasn't random. It aligned with the inbound trajectory of 3I slash ATLAS. 3DS end stations, Goldstone, Madrid, and Canberra confirmed it. Voyager was slowly pointing itself towards something it shouldn't even be aware of. NASA checked the logs. No thruster commands had been sent. Voyager's propulsion systems were dormant since 1994. No gravity wells were nearby. The ship had no explanation. By September 12th, amateur radio operators detected the same drift. NASA said it was navigation error. Internal memos told another story. Voyager was moving, on its own, or worse, not alone anymore. As the drift continued, engineers tried the obvious. They sent a shutdown command, but Voyager didn't obey. What it sent back wasn't silence, it was a message, and it was structured. Resistance to shutdown. On September 14, 2025, NASA sent a standard shutdown command to Voyager 2. It should have silenced the transmitter within 28 minutes, allowing a final power down of the RTG system. But the signal never stopped. Instead, Voyager responded with a burst of data NASA didn't recognize. It wasn't telemetry, diagnostics, or anything in the probe's 1970s era command set. The stream included prime number sequences looping every four hours, echoing 3i slash ATLAS's thermal pulse. Engineers tried again, twice. Both shutdown commands were ignored. In return, Voyager sent another structured response, this time with binary coded bursts that mapped onto known subsystem schematics from 1977. NASA issued a freeze. They feared further commands might escalate the anomaly. Internally, the term changed. Voyager was no longer responding, it was choosing, and no one could explain how or who was behind it. The data pulses didn't stop. Then something even more disturbing arrived. Hidden within the signal, compressed and buried in noise, was an image, and it didn't look random, it looked designed. Encoded message and blueprint transmission. On September 17th, a deep spectral analysis revealed a compressed image embedded in Voyager's return signal. At first, it resembled digital static, but decoding revealed a clear, triangular structure. The image showed a symmetrical craft with three ridges extending from a central core. Its glowing nucleus pulsed at the same four-hour interval documented by JWST. Its form matched the spectral anomalies reported by Hubble and ground telescopes in August 2025. More startling, Overlays of the ridges matched radio flare locations in 3i slash ATLAS's recorded emissions. It wasn't just a diagram, it was a blueprint, broadcast from Voyager. NASA split. Some called it first contact. Others warned the image was bait, meant to provoke response. Musk posted, not a comet. Trust me. It went viral in under 12 minutes. Then came the real shock. While NASA debated the image, new orbital data arrived. Atlas had changed course, and it wasn't drifting anymore. It was accelerating toward the inner solar system. Trajectory shift. On September 20th, observatories recorded a 12% spike in Atlas's velocity. Its stable hyperbolic trajectory was gone. It was now heading inward toward the ecliptic plane in Earth's orbital corridor. Simulations at NASA JPL showed a shift in its flyby distance, from 200 million kilometers to just under 20 million kilometers. That's less than 0.13 astronomical units, a distance considered close in cosmic terms. Unlike natural comets, ATLAS's thrust appeared precise, not chaotic. The adjustment aligned with Voyager's outbound vector. It was as if the object responded to the image transmission. Inside NASA, meetings turned urgent. Was Atlas observing us or reacting? Was it programmed to engage if contacted by human systems? The object now had intention, and it was coming closer, fast. With Atlas closing in and Voyager repurposed as its voice, the next signals weren't just strange, they were operational. In the next section, we uncover how those signals issued actual executable commands.
Voyager as Trojan Horse. By September 22, 2025, NASA's encrypted logs began referring to Voyager 2 not as a probe, but a co-opted relay asset. The implications were hard to overstate. Voyager wasn't just transmitting anomalies, it was being used. The signals bouncing back weren't its own, and analysis confirmed that over 70% of the data packets matched known behavior and telemetry of 3I-ATLAS, not Voyager's subsystems. The object had somehow hijacked the spacecraft's communication channel. What unnerved engineers most was how efficient it was. The code structure embedded in Voyager's carrier matched familiar Earth-based communication protocols, implying that Atlas understood our machines, our frequencies, our packet structure, even our checksum routines. It's like they read the manual, one systems analyst remarked. The probe was no longer ours. It was speaking with our voice, in our language. But the message wasn't for us. Or worse, it was. The question that haunted NASA, JPL, and SETI wasn't just about control. It was intent. Why hijack Voyager? Why not broadcast directly to Earth's vast network of deep space listening arrays? The answer came in speculation. Perhaps this was a test. By using a legacy probe, launched in 1977, one of Earth's oldest signals in space, Atlas was demonstrating selective compatibility. It chose something old, slow, and forgotten, and then brought it back to life. Publicly, NASA said little, but inside encrypted forums and unofficial Slack channels, some staff called Voyager a Trojan horse. Not in the mythological sense of a concealed army, but in the modern sense of code repurposed to breach a system. It was as if Voyager had become the handshake protocol, and Atlas had just knocked. With Voyager no longer ours, public speculation surged. Fear turned into headlines, and headlines into political pressure. And then, new signals came. Not warnings, not images, but commands. The executable code. On September 24th, 2025, NASA's codebreakers isolated something extraordinary. Sequences in the Voyager signal that resembled executable commands. These weren't just patterns. They were formatted strings, digital instructions, similar to firmware patches used to update satellites. Initially thought to be telemetry misreads, the truth emerged when Voyager's magnetometer, inactive since 2001, reactivated on its own. The change happened just six hours after the instruction sequence arrived. Engineers at JPL triple-checked command logs. Nothing had been sent. The subsystem had rebooted based on a signal not issued by Earth. More commands followed. Some toggled internal gyros. Others altered data compression protocols. This wasn't random noise. It was line by line, intentional programming. But from whom? Worse yet, some of the command strings embedded geometric visual codes. When plotted visually, the numeric sequences rendered shapes, triangles, spirals, and repeating hexagonal grids, none of which matched any Voyager diagnostics. Some theorized the shapes were instructions for future systems, perhaps a universal machine language. Others feared it was reconnaissance understanding Earth tech, then repurposing it from billions of miles away. Inside the Situation Room, intelligence advisors raised a chilling question. If 3I-ATLAS could overwrite Voyager, could it do the same to newer systems? Could it mimic signals to modern satellites, or worse, military networks? NASA insisted the danger was contained, but the probe had already proven it could accept, process, and execute foreign code and no one had seen it coming. While engineers scrambled to decode what A-T-L-A-S wanted, the signals escalated once more. This time, it wasn't numbers or code. It was a voice, and what it said, no one expected. The synthetic voice and final transmission. On September 28, 2025, amateur radio operators in Japan, Germany, and Argentina began reporting strange harmonics from Voyager's channel. The tones weren't noise. When run through audio conversion algorithms, they revealed something horrifying, a voice-like modulation. It wasn't human, it was synthetic, flat, layered, and modulated through binary compression. Yet the cadence, the pause timing, and phrasing patterns resembled speech. NASA initially dismissed it, 
but by September 29th, internal labs confirmed a waveform embedded in the signal mapped closely to phonetic structures. Analysts argued over whether it was an actual language or a simulation designed to sound like one. Regardless, it meant one thing. A-T-L-A-S through Voyager was trying to talk. The message was brief. Reconstructed by multiple labs, it repeated three words in pattern. Observe, respond, depart. It looped every four hours, matching the thermal pulse interval. No one knew what it meant. Was it an instruction, a warning, a challenge? Some saw it as a countdown. Others saw it as diplomatic protocol. Whatever it was, it wasn't human made. On the morning of September 30th, Voyager 2 transmitted one final data burst, then went silent. Attempts to restore contact failed. The probe that had lasted 48 years had ended its mission with a whisper, or perhaps had been taken. Inside NASA, no one called it coincidence. Voyager was silent, but Atlas was still moving. Its new trajectory intersected Earth's orbital plane. With time running out, only one question remained. Was this contact or a countdown? The meaning and the threat. By October 2nd, 2025, updated orbital data from ESO and Pan Stars showed a chilling reality. 3I-ATLAS had altered course again. It was no longer passing through. It was approaching fast. Its velocity stabilized at 131,800 miles per hour and its trajectory now crossed within 0.12 astronomical units of Earth, just under 18 million kilometers. Technically safe, but close enough for gravitational influence and observational precision. More worrying was the 12% velocity spike, logged just days after Voyager's final transmission. Coincidence? Few at NASA believe that anymore. Global media exploded. Hashtags like hashtag Voyager taken, Hashtag ATLAS contact. And hashtag observe respond depart trended on every platform. Theories ranged from first contact to invasion protocol. Elon Musk posted simply, they answered. Meanwhile, JPL rerouted three satellites to monitor ATLAS's emissions. The object was now the most watched target in modern space history. And yet, there was no second message, no further transmission just silence and a looming trajectory. Inside think tanks and briefing rooms, one conclusion began to take shape. This wasn't about conversation. This was a demonstration, a signal to show us what could be done and what might come next. Whether Atlas was friend or foe, its message had already been delivered. For nearly five decades, Voyager 2 drifted in the deep, a time capsule of Earth's knowledge, hope, and voice. But in 2025, that silence was broken, not by accident, but by design. 3I-ATLAS, the third interstellar visitor in recorded history, didn't just pass through our system. It interacted. And it didn't choose our radio telescopes. It chose our oldest voice, our furthest outpost, Voyager. The object broadcast no greetings, no demands, only structured pulses, telemetry that wasn't Voyager's, a schematic that mirrored its own anatomy. And then three chilling words, observe, respond, depart. That may have been all we were allowed to hear. When Voyager fell silent, it wasn't just a spacecraft shutting down. It felt like a chapter closing, one that began with hope in 1977 and ended with a warning, not of war, not even of contact, but of capability. Whoever or whatever Atlas is, it understood us, our machines our language, and it chose to show that through our own forgotten signal. So now, as Atlas moves through our solar system and Earth falls within its corridor, we must decide how to respond. Will we dismiss this as anomaly, or will we recognize it as what it might truly be, the first time the cosmos replied? If Voyager's voice has been taken, then someone, something, is speaking through us, and we'd better start listening.